Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Eker. There's something about this title that makes it seem like this evil ghost. Ooh, Secrets of the Millionaire. <laughs> it's a very well-known book today. It's up there with other books like The Millionaire Fastlane, Millionaire Booklet, The Millionaire Success Habits, Millionaire Next Door, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, and, well, you get the point. They're all great books. I have said in other reviews that when you hear words like achieve your dreams, your thoughts and beliefs shape your reality, love the life you live, fulfilling your potential. The thing is, when you hear these words in so many programs over and over again, sure you understand them, but if you apply them, begin, they begin to sound like white noise. I don't know if I'm the only one who thinks that, but like, for some reason, I never felt this way about the word millionaire. I don't know what it is. There's something about money that I just I hear over and over again and I'm like, and I'm like, I can't get enough of this stuff. <laughs> I genuinely find myself enjoying millionaire books that talk about millionaires and becoming millionaires and not about the things that I just listed. Maybe they do, but they don't talk about it in this corny, let's love the life we live kind of way. I don't know what it is. And I know it's like, it's like, okay, if you know my channel, why review another book about money? Well, it's kind of that, but it's also kind of like, you will always be underpaid. Everyone will always be underpaid. A million dollars is a lot of money. If you look at the first million someone makes and how they make it, but how do they make it? What is the secret? Secret, what's the secret? <laughs> what are some hidden gems? What are some standout quotes from this book? Who do I recommend this book to and what book should you check out next? Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel and I want to make self growth normal. If you want to make self growth normal because I don't want to do it alone, then make sure to smash that like button. There are two parts. There's the money blueprint and then there's the wealth files. I love the wealth files. The money blueprint explains how we're conditioned to act and think when it comes to money. It outlines four key strategies. Okay, so right off the bat, this author, first impressions, he doesn't sound in like cold or impersonable. Is that a word? Impersonable? But he doesn't sound that sincere. I don't know what it is. It doesn't feel to me like a as a consumer. He specifically knows what it's like to be broke, which doesn't make sense to me because he has his backstory someone who grew up in a household under parents with poor mindsets. So for a while in his 20s, he tried to swim upstream and it wasn't working. It's because he was just verbally taught to not make it work. At first, I loved his points. I didn't love how he got to them. However, the further I got into the book, this sort of smoothed itself out. Maybe I'm coming from somewhere else, but most people at the top, they did not. And I love that so much. I don't know if I've explained this in a review before, but I'm gonna take a leap here. To be frank, my dad is an oncologist. So did I grow up in a lower or lower middle class household? Am I the only person who reads or listens to books like this obsessively that cannot answer that question with a yes? Now, the last thing I want is to make it sound like I think that's good or bad. A lot of kids, maybe they took advantage of that and they, they got spoiled or whatever. But what I love about my parents is that they never gave me any advice about money. They never said anything about money ever. This allowed me to form my own beliefs about money. The most valuable thing here I'm saying was never ever money. It was a clean slate. And my point is that a clean slate with the right intentions, the right principles, the right work ethic, that will always be more valuable than any dollar amount, any inheritance. Part two is the wealth file. 17 different ways rich people think differently from poor people. Think and act. And again, there's 17 of these, so I'm gonna say some of my favorites and, you know, a little my thoughts on them. Rich people admire successful people, poor people resent them. I love what he said about the beautiful, big, black jaguar that he got. People gave him dirty looks because of it. They flipped him off. They got keyed in one neighborhood. They played basketball with beer cans, throwing them into a sunroof and like they cut him off on the highway. Why? Is it wrong to have a nice car? He went to the same area with an old Ford sedan. I think he said, and, it, and, and, and no one batted an eye. This is such twisted behavior, is it not? Rich people associate with positive successful people, poor people associate with negative unsuccessful people. The dichotomy of rich people think like and do this, and poor people think like and do this, I think that this, this all opens some options up for the reader or listener. You can either respond with skepticism of, 
How does this guy know this? I've never seen or heard of him. Or you can respond with open-mindedness. Like, well, maybe there's something I can learn from this. Maybe he's onto something. If this is something that even his thorough reasoning, I strongly cannot see as understandable and agreeable in most of these wealth files, which by the way, I love the term wealth files. <laughs> Usually in these books, it's like laws or, or principles or rules. There's just something cool about files that makes it sound like private or secretive. Maybe some of them I'll see if I can look just look at them just a little bit differently. The most interesting one to me is probably that rich people focus on net worth while poor people focus on income. When you think of what can I spend right now, this is probably the biggest difference between rich people and poor people. I mean, the biggest difference between rich people and poor people is easily how they see and treat and think about money. Before this, it was 80%. Now it's as high as 63% of Americans, two out of three of us, during a global pandemic recession. We spend everything we get. If you're one of those Americans, you may want to check this book out as soon as possible. My favorite part of this book, if I didn't mention it already, is the 17 wealth files. Because the wealth files is where things get very specific. And where a lot of the best and the unique stories can be found. And examples. But I enjoyed the whole thing. All the quote unquote repackaged content. I enjoyed as well because if you guys know me with this channel, then you know that if I see re repackaged content that's repackaged well in a way that you still get more perspective out of the book, I think, it's, I think it's worth it. But what do the negative reviews have to say? And do I agree with them? Because sometimes I do, and sometimes there are things that I notice, but that maybe I didn't mention in the review. As it turns out, these all seemed to mention something that I did not mention in the review. It's been a while since I listened to an audiobook with, with enough of this to shoot it down. Maybe it went over my head writing the review, but when I looked at other reviews, it zoomed into my ear canals. I didn't find any one or two star reviews on Audible, but a review review by Gil Hermy, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, said, good book, too much advertising. Attend the Millionaire Mind Seminar. Here's the Millionaire Mind Seminar. Honestly, I've been happier with authors promoting this much, but using multiple products. It makes me feel like this book is being used as a gateway specifically to his seminar. Which is fine, I guess, but at the same time, it sounds a little... Mm -hmm. Pasty? Other authors and books have said, people ask me at my seminars. I hear at my seminars. If your book title had a different name from your seminar, I don't think it would make that much of a difference. A four-star review by Gwingui, I hope I'm pronouncing that right too, said the advertising left him feeling like he didn't get all the info, and that it said the seminar has more info. This almost makes me think if he didn't say anything about the seminar during the whole book, more people would get more info out of the book, and perhaps it would be more successful. But that makes me think the seminar, which by the way is $795 a ticket, according to Project Life Mastery, which by the way is over 30 times the cost of the book, wouldn't be as successful. Get this, a five-star review. This is how you know you did something wrong. Said the same thing. Anonymous user. Too many, many advertisements. I love the book, but he mentions his seminar about 70 times too many. Overall, a good book. I can't believe I didn't mention this in my review. People watching it up to this point, they may be like, Well, Sam, if it's so bad, why didn't you mention it? Honestly, I just kind of pushed it to the side when I heard it. I was like, this info is too good for me to care about that. But come to think of it, I agree, there is way too much self-advertising. Quotes. If you're not doing as well as you'd like, all that means is there's something you don't know. Your income can grow only to the extent that you do. No thought lives in your head rent-free. There's no such thing as a really rich victim. He notes that he is recognized as a best-selling author, not a best-writing author. If the 100-foot oak tree had the mind of a human, it would only grow 10 feet tall. How you do anything is how you do everything. If you think education is expensive, try ignorance. Direction one. I recommend this book for anyone having money problems. Excellent mindset book, not just about money, but a lot of things money. Like it, it gets into a lot of the nitty gritty details. The 17 wealth files, if you know if you know a thing or two about money, you can still learn a bit. If you don't learn a bit, you could still get a little perspective shift. I have not heard a lot of this stuff in other books. Direction two. If you like this book. I swear you will love Millionaire Success Habits by Dean Graziosi. Harv Egger really seems to like uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, which is a much harder sell than this book. It's a lot more adamant and stubborn about beliefs regarding rich and poor, not people, but 
thinking. At the same time, if you can tolerate that, it is almost impossible to ignore the golden insights you can uh, you can find scrolling your way through it. If you can't just seem to find yourself getting into the habit of saving money, however, once again, I recommend the almost annoyingly aggressive penny pincher, The Millionaire Next Door by Thomas Stanley. Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Ecker. There's a link in the description if you guys want to check it out and read the reviews. That and all the other books that I mentioned in this video, if you want to check those out too. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know if you checked out this book and you liked it. If you guys buy anything through the links in the description, then I get commission, which helps me build this channel and keep making these videos. But hey, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, because I don't get why people watch this far into my reviews and they don't subscribe, but if you have subscribed and you want to turn it up just a notch and turn on that notification bell to get a notification whenever I drop new videos, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.